Hey everybody and welcome to the seventh part of the Goda Tower Defense series. In this tutorial we'll be taking a look at play, pause and speed up. Well, let's get started. Before we can pause or play anything we're gonna need some icons for our user interface. In the download folder where you've downloaded all the assets so far I've also made you download Kenny's game icons folder or pack. If we click into that, into the PNGs, into the white PNGs, into the twice size, these are 100 by 100, we see a lot of these icons. And I've picked out, you can see it right here in Godot, the fast forward, pause and a right icon. Now the right icon I'm going to be using for play as these look pretty similar. So make sure you get those three icons out of that pack from that folder and put them into your assets folder under your project and I've chosen the icons folder underneath assets. With our icons added to the game we can start adding them to the user interface. I'm going to scroll down to our scenes folder and in main scenes I'm going to open up the game scene. The game scene is where we have our user interface in the canvas layer. We already have our build bar here, we don't need that so we can close that up and we're going to be adding a new horizontal container to the hub. We'll add a new child node, we'll say hbox container, we'll create it. In the hbox container we want to have two buttons, one for the speed up and the other one for both play and pause. And we're going to turn this button into a touch button that once you press it, it takes on a different icon so that it can have the two functionalities in one basically. With the hbox container, we'll add a new node, that will be a texture button. The texture button, let's first set up the size and some of the basics. So on the rectangle, we're going to set the minimum size to 70 by 70. Seems like a pretty good size to me. And of course, the HBox container is going to determine the final size of this texture button. So we want to tell the HBox container that this particular node that he owns, he needs to shrink to center. That way it always, re always remains 70 by 70. Now on the top, we're going to set expand on. That means that the textures we'll add are going to be scaled to 70 by 70. And now we can add the textures. I'll scroll up here and I'll drag the write.png to the normal and I'll drag the pause.png to the pressed. Now, I'm, of course, this, uh, the name of these icons, write, pause, fast forward, are the exact names from the asset pack of Kenny. Write just happens to look like a play button, that's why I'm using it, but feel free to rename that to play. I haven't done so because I wanted to make sure you know exactly which assets I've used. Now that we have this in the button or the, the base button parameters, I'm going to turn toggle mode on and we can emulate what happens if a player were to press it with this pressed parameter here. Now if the player presses play, it will automatically turn into its paused uh, icon because it will take its pressed icon from the textures there. And now as you can see, the player will have one button with two functions and we'll code the functionality in the code. Now that we have this, and let's rename this to pause play. We'll duplicate that and in the textures I'm going to remove the pressed texture and to normal I'll uh, drag my fast forward.png. For the fast forward button we don't want this to be a toggle mode so we're going to turn that off. And we right click that, we rename it and we'll call it speed up. Now we of course don't want these buttons to be in the top left. I think it would look nice if they are in the uh, bottom right. So with the HBox container, now that we have that, let's rename that to Game Control so we know what this is. We're going to go over to Layout and we're going to put this in the bottom right. I think this is a little bit too close to the edge of the screen, so we're going to give this a little bit of padding with some margin. We'll add minus 20 from the right and the bottom and for that to take effect we also have to deduct that from the top and from left so it's going to be minus 19. As you can see now we got a nice 20 pixel padding from the edge of the screen which makes it look a, a little bit better. Now that we have our buttons added to our user interface we can start coding them up and make the player able to use them. Let's start with our pause and play functionality. We go over to the pause play button under node signals we're going to connect its pressed signal up to the user interface code as this is a user interface element. We'll connect that and of course I've prepared some code for us so I'll paste that in here. 
I've added some extra comments to know that this is where the game control functions are going to start. And we're going to check if the current tree is paused. Pause is a parameter of the entire tree which helps us to pause our game. If it is not paused, then well, we're going to turn pause to true. Now, when we play the game, you'll see that the button is not 100% functional because you would expect now that we hit pause, we're going to change that in a moment. When we hit that button, you can see that now the game is, is paused. As a result, though, we cannot click this button again. We also cannot click the bold buttons, which is what we desire. We don't want the player to be able to build during pause because that would incentivize the player to pause the game the whole time, which basically destroys the flow of the game that we would aim for in a tower defense game. However, because we cannot click any button, we also cannot play the game anymore. The way that this works, if we go back to our pause play button, back to the inspector, and we scroll all the way down here, you see that there is this pause mode. By default, this is set to inherit. It inherits the paused parameter from the tree. And we are gonna set this to process. That way, we can determine when this button needs to be paused, and it's not going to be inheriting that pause parameter that we are setting in code. So now when we go new game, we can hit play and pause all the time. The only thing we have to change is that we have to stop the game from playing as we start. As a tower defense game starts, we want the player to use the initial cache to build a couple of towers strategically as the, after he has or she has analyze the map and then we want them to hit play and start playing the game. So let's code that in. We're going to go back to the script where we just were and right now if we press that play button or pause button we're going to check if the tree is paused. Well it isn't when we start out the game because we never set the parameter to be paused. Right now it's immediately reverting to well then we have to pause the game but that's not true at the start. What we want to do is we want to check if the current wave parameter on the parent, remember, we're currently on the UI script, so we need to go to the parent, the game scene, where we got that current wave parameter. If current wave is zero, which means that the game just started or the player just started this game, we're going to set the current wave to plus one. So now we're going to start or can start wave number one. That's what we're going to do. We're going to start the next wave. And that means that now we can go back to the script of the game scene and now we don't have to start next wave when the map is ready loading. That's which we used to demonstrate how the tanks roll over the map but now we want the player to have a little bit of time to play some turrets before the tanks start rolling in. Now when we play the game with this couple lines of extra code, you can see that now the map doesn't have tanks on it yet. The player will be able to place a couple of turrets with some starter cache and now it can hit play. Tanks start rolling in, we can hit pause and play and pause. That's all working fine. Now we gotta make sure that that speed up button starts working. For speed up, we of course first have to connect the signal. Select the speed up button and over in node, signals, we're going to connect the press signal to the user interface script, also where we've connected our pause play button. In here, I'll add the code that I got from my project that I prepared. And here we're going to set the time scale of the engine. Engine is a a global variable or a global server that is running. It's the, the game engine itself. And the engine has a time scale. So when we hit speed up, we want to see what the current time scale is so we know if we need to speed it up or slow it down. So we're going to check the current time scale. And if that is two, if we have already sped it up, then we're going to set the time scale to one. And otherwise, that means that the time scale is one, we're going to set the time scale to be two. Now, when we hit play, new game, and we hit the play, our tanks start rolling in, and we can make them extra fast or slow again or extra fast. Now, what you'll see now, when we start testing this further, that with this new game, if we hit play, we were to build a tower, a player would still be able to hit pause, and this tower is still now, well, it is there, but it's not really useful, right? And you would hit play, and you can start building your tower again. That's undesired behavior. We would prefer that the build mode is canceled if one of these two buttons were to be pressed. On top of both of these functions, both arm, pause, play, pressed, we'll add two lines of code that if the build mode, which is another parameter 
on the parent, then we're going to get the parent and cancel that build mode. And we'll do exactly the same here. Now when we play the game, hit new game, we're to play the game. If we are building a turret and we hit pause, now we're canceling that build mode out before we're actually pausing the game. And when we hit play, you again have all the normal functionality and you would be able to build a tower again. All right, that was it for today, guys. Short tutorial, but some very handy functions for you to not only use in this game, but to use in many games. Many games need a pause function or a speed up function. Hope you like it. If you did, then please smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on future episodes in this tutorial series. Hope to see you there. Until then, keep on gaming, keep on coding. See you later, guys.